So now that we have an XRF line scan in front of us, we can start going through this and identifying different features and how to understand those. So we'll start by understanding the color coding and the legend of all of this. This first uh, line over here at the far left, and the tallest one here is black. And by looking down here along the bottom, I can see that the legend has dictated that this is the calcium K-alpha transition that has been detected. If I go down, I can see that there's this dark blue line. And looking at the legend again, I can see that this is the zinc K-alpha transition. Going down a little further, I can see the next most abundant is yellow. Looking at the legend, I can see that the yellow line corresponds to the calcium K-beta transition. So keep that in mind while you're doing your analysis of this graph. You might be looking at the same element, just two different electron transitions that resulted in light fluorescing. And so the, when that happens, that you're dealing with two elements that are the same, just two different transitions, the features that they have will be the same. They'll start off, they'll drop at the same, they'll rise at the same uh, positions and whatnot. It's the relative magnitude between the two. They'll be roughly five to six times the, the height difference between the K-alpha and K-beta. Now, for a specific element and how that changes throughout the, uh, throughout the scan, throughout the position of our sample, we can start at the far left and work away far right and just watch how the height of the line changes. So, for the calcium K-alpha line, we can see that it was initially abundant and then rather abruptly drops down to a lower concentration. And for the next 30 or so millimeters, it stagnates at roughly the same concentration. And towards the end, it slowly picks itself back up. And then at roughly the 60 millimeter position, we can see that it uh, starts to peak up a lot faster. And at the 64 millimeter position, it, uh, the concentration of calcium rises rather abruptly. And for the next 10 millimeters or so, uh, the concentration oscillates back and forth, but follows a general trend downwards. And following that, we can see that the concentration again oscillates around and kind of plateaus. So that's how you'll interpret and understand this graph is just in the relative height changes that the uh, different elements have. And that will tell you the relative concentration changes uh, throughout the pos uh, position of the sample. Now that can tell you a lot. Um, if you can correlate the uh, position with different features, either dark zones, light zones, spots, or, or various different interesting things about your sample, you can learn a little bit about the chemistry like that. Um, but we can also learn how the chemistry interacts with it, or uh, changes with respect to itself. And what I mean by that is we can look at the calcium and compare that to the zinc and see how they change with respect to each other. So initially, calcium was very abundant and zinc not so much. Getting to the 20 millimeter mark, we see calcium uh, kind of diminishes a little bit, but not a whole lot, whereas zinc increases its concentration. At the 20 millimeter mark, it uh, drops down rather abruptly, and then they both actually do. And so we can see that there's a little correlation between the two there. For the next 30 or so millimeters, we see that both the zinc and calcium kind of plateau and stagnate away. Uh, the zinc has a little more variability to it, uh, which might indicate a few things. We can see also that where the calcium started to rise, the zinc does as well. But the zinc reaches its peak concentration before the calcium does. But they generally follow the same trend of increasing together. And then, uh, shortly where the, um, the calcium was increasing the fastest, the zinc actually does not, and it starts to go down. Following the pattern where the zinc, uh, sorry, the calcium uh, oscillated back and forth but followed a general trend downward, we see that zinc kind of does the same, but it doesn't oscillate nearly as much. And in fact, we might be able to attribute some of that oscillation to just the noise within the data, as we can see that it is fairly noisy. And so that's how we correlate two different elemental concentrations with each other on the same sample. We just see how they change with respect to each other, try to identify different features there. And again, if we know certain things about our sample, uh, whether it has spots, dark regions, light regions, uh, uh, a damage to it or what have you, uh, we can start to learn a little bit about that. So that's how you identify a uh, different features on an XRF line scan.